Yo, so I, I just want to point out, this is therapy for us all. Like, week in, week out. We look forward to it. So, question number one: What's the criteria on selecting mothers for our children? Like, how do we about that? Oh, yo, you know what, um, man? Through experience and through the year, like my criteria is, is constantly evolving and changing, man. It's like it's like when you buy a house when you're younger, and you you know what I'm saying. Like when I bought my house, I just wanted a basement. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand like the slope of the driveway and like, you know what I mean? The size of the bathrooms and the kitchen and the resale value and you know what I'm saying? Where it's located. But now that with through time of understanding, if I bought a house now, I would pick a totally different house, man. You know what I mean? Based on everything that I understand. So I think that's like picking a mom, man. Like when you're young, you're just looking for certain things, man. Most of it's physical, you know, or somebody that just, you know, you can get along with. But now, I got to understand your background. I got to know how your relationship with your mom is, how your relationship with your brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you treat your siblings. Like, like all that's important, man. Like, every little thing, man. That Because that, that contributes to how, you know what I'm saying, they're going to treat the children, dog. How the environment the children going to be in. What you got, bro? Man, um, that's a good question. Uh, it's crazy because, you know, really, I never really... Like early on, I never really thought about that. Like, you know, the type of person as far as that I would want for a mother and my child. Like for me, it was always like, you know, I, I kind of bypassed that that thought. It was more like, okay, who would be the best to create a space with? You know what I mean? And I felt like if that space was tight, you know what I mean? And everything else would kind of work itself out. So I, I didn't really think about, you know, for the kids, and once I got to a certain age, it was like, I was really like, not interested in having kids. I was just like, uh. so it was more just like, you know, how can we create a space that's going to be conducive to success? And then anything that comes after that, I, I was just, I, I was hoping it will build success. So it just, it was weird. I was kind of working it backwards. So what's some of the qualities she has to have? Let's nail down some things. Yes, well, for me, it, it was more or less like, you know, she had to have some like some kind of uh, like grounding mechanism, whether that was spirituality, was that was, you know what I mean, the church or whatever it was, some kind of grounding mechanism where she could, you know, look back to if she was going to left, she'd, you know, be able to something there to be able to pull her back right. If she's going to right, there's something there to be able to pull her back left. And, you know, it's like some kind of drive, you know, and, and goals. And just um, just being able to to focus, you know, on on something and being able to move forward like that was important to me because that's the type of stuff that I was on. And I was like, you know, I can't have a partner that's not, you know, moving at least at the same pace as me or in the, in the, in the same direction as me to where we can have those, those conversations. So that that was more important to me to have somebody who was who was interested in, in moving forward and not just kind of staying in the same place. Man, so man, for me, I actually like I was I was very intentional. Like I thought about this stuff before I did it, and I did it quote unquote the right way. Um, so for me, man, I actually, man, I was looking at I like firstly, man, I wanted them to come from a good family. You know what I mean? So the fact that they actually seen it already, that they could, it wasn't they were learning on the job. I want them to actually know exactly what it looked like. So that was one, and then I want them to be nurturing. I want them to like kids for that matter. And then for two, I want them to have a sense of a purpose that it wasn't just, oh, well, we'll see what we can get out of it. No, like she, she understood and we had the same morals. Um, so I thought a lot of those things were super important. Um, and I thought a lot of those things is, you know, will transition into becoming a better mother. 
Um, so with that being said, I mean, I, I think that, you know, those are still the things that ring true, man. Like, obviously, there's no blueprint to this. So, but at the very at the same time, have you seen it done correctly or at least productively? You know what I mean? Obviously, we're all learning or whatever. But at the same time, to have a certain level of stability, man, I thought that was super important. And um, that, that's how I went about it, man. So that was definitely my, my mindset going into it. For me, man, it was all about uh... – structure physical attributes like uh what they look like um because that's what my kids is going to look like right so I, I was big on that um the home the home structure was important too like because i didn't come from it i always wanted like yeah she i wanted her to come from that grounded father mother you know what i mean that uh that nuclear family so uh her seeing it was like yeah like then she knows how to kind of be in it and as i'm trying to navigate and gap my way around it um she already knows like hey we could turn here or we could turn there in a situation you know what i mean so definitely physically um uh, i always wanted you know the mother of my kids to be athletic i always thought about how she was built you know uh, you know I, I, for those who know me you know i have certain things about certain builds that i was like i don't want that in my, <laughs> i don't want that structure in my lineage you know what i mean so like so her being athletic was important her being smart was important um nurturing for sure um but something to kind of throw me off like one thing i always wanted like she had to have something that uh the kids would always remember like uh yeah my mom makes the best peach cobbler in the world like when they go away somewhere they could come you know they tell they home they homies or they friends like yeah, I'm gonna take you back to my house for the for Thanksgiving, and my mom makes the best of peach cobbler, apple pie, her macaroni and cheese is banging. You know what I mean? Something. So I, that was also important too. You know, just to have that uh, good mother sense. You know, what I mean, I always thought that was that was super important. Um, you know, for I, I think it just brings memories. You know what I mean? So so physical attributes. You know how she's built. You know her her intelligence. You know she, she definitely had to be smart, um, and definitely that that nurturing side, and and something special to pass on. You know that that the kids could really appreciate. You know family. You know her love for family was definitely huge, and and how I you know wanted to pick or select. You know even from a long time because I already knew like nuclear family was for me from from a young age. I said, like, after, like, 16 years, I'm a single man, so I don't think I did a great job. So I think I missed that one. I might have missed the mark, so, you know what I mean? Look, I'm going to tell you something right today, right? So my daughter's been ignoring her mom, right? Because they got, like, a little beef going on, right? And so, in turn, the mom, her mom started ignoring her when the daughter was trying to reach out and, and bring it together. And she, she texts me with the thread, like, yeah, she wanted to know me. I got something for her. And I'm like, yo, what in your mind would make you think it's okay to ignore her when she's trying to reach out? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. Like, why would you think that's cool? And when I when I called her accountable, she got upset. And then we started talking about whole different things. But, like, with that mindset, I know I missed. You know what I mean? Because... Like, why do I even have to bring that to your attention that that shit is totally wrong? You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is totally backwards. I said, yo, so the child is the one with the sense at this point? Like, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? This is the bigger person is the child. You supposed to be, you know what I'm saying, bring her in. So, like I said, I miss with that. And I miss with the family thing, man. Like you said, the family structure, not paying attention to the relationships. Because how her relationship is with her people is how her all relationship end up being. You know what I mean? And that that was huge, man. You know what I'm saying? So me going forward, that's one thing I'm looking at. Like I said, it's huge with me. I want to know how you are with your family and how you deal with adversity. You know what I'm saying? Because in any relationship, you're going to have adverse situations. You know, so, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like I said, man, long story short, son. Yeah, I missed that mark, B. I missed that one, son. You know what I'm saying? I mean, none of us perfect, you know, so we, we all kind of miss somewhere. You know I what I mean? So, 
So I mean that's that's why I said, there's a difference between what we pick and and what and what we what we wanted and what we actually got. You know what I mean? In, in certain circumstances, make you know makes you make those decisions. You know, at, at, at uncomfortable times. So, Leifer, what you got? The story is still being written. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I got what I picked. Like to the ultimate level, you know what I mean? I got what I picked. And like I said, that story is still being written, but amazing mother, you know what I mean? Extremely nurturing. Everything that I'm not, which is something I need because as far as that emotional aspect and that nurturing thing, I'm not really, I'm not that guy. You know, I'm, I'm more like the authoritarian. I'm more like the teacher, the leader, you know what I mean? The coach, the, the person that's going to be there to create structure but that whole emotional aspect i'm not that so my wife is literally everything that i'm not and she fills those gaps in motherhood that i can't even get close to so you know i would say I, i'm i'm as close to the mark as i could be um with that but you know the story is still being written and, and we still got a long way to go so you know i got a 15 year old and now i got a uh, nine month old, so this whole cycle starting over. So it's you know, the story is still being written. Yeah, so you know, kind of, kind of like Lee was saying. I mean, one of the things that's kind of really interesting is because I did it a little bit different, right? So my pick was spot on for what I wanted at seventeen. By the time I got to be twenty eight, it wasn't the right pick anymore. I evolved, and you know, the things that I thought were important weren't as important anymore, or I, I put emphasis on other things. So the the part that was really like mind blowing is I was picking like I know how y'all was saying, like your pick was your pick. Like I was picking a mother instead of picking, I was picking more for a kid than I was picking for me, if that makes sense. And the things that were important to me and the things that were that I needed was no longer the right pick for me. It was still the right pick for my offspring or whatever. But I was like, yo, this it's hard for me to, to cohabitate with this. It's not going to work. So that that becomes really important. Like you have to be able to exist with that person in order to be able to have a, a nuclear family of your own. The fact that they were able to do it like I don't really you know, obviously, I don't know the dynamics from the previous generation, how they were able to deal with some of the stuff that I was dealing with. Right. So it's just one of those things where you just had to be like, this ain't this isn't great for me. But it was still, you know, a good pick from a mother standpoint, but from a, you know, from a mate, help mate standpoint, it, it just wasn't a good fit anymore. But again, that's from 17 year old self making decisions that were long-term when you probably wasn't ready to make those types of decisions yet. Me, you know, I did it twice, right? So the first, the first time around, um, Man, the family core, the, that nuclear background, that was there. Um, my first two children, uh, they came from a. The family structure on that side was was phenomenal. Like it was, it was one to be like, dang, like, they really got it together. I mean, they had family reunions, you know, Christmas holiday dinners was banging. Um, I think at the time, I, I noticed a lot of things that. Um, I, sh I shouldn't have done and 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 even at that even at that point um it was way too early to, to kind of pull the trigger and the reason I did even go through with having children with you know with, with the with my first uh, kid's mother man I was I was kind of in a dark place so like at that time in my life I wasn't winning and I needed a win so it was like well the family's cool I think she'll be all right. I think she'll be all right if it's a mother. And I, I just misjudged it completely wrong. You know what I mean? And uh, But I, like I said, it, it's my own fault because, like I said, I was in a dark place and I needed a win. And I thought, I just knew, I thought about being a father all my life. So I was like, that's one of the things I know I'm not going to fail at. I'm going to win at that. And there's no way, there's no way I'm going to drop off at that. So I gave it one of them, like, hey, roll the dice, let's go. And uh, I know what I'm gonna do on my side, and ain't no way this thing gonna drop off. And uh, I think my second, 
another thing I kind of like <clears throat> misevaluated was thinking that all women have these mothering traits and they don't, right? So um they got really the hardware, a, they might not have the software. Right. It is really a person by person basis on, on how that works. Like, you know what I mean? So um you can't just assume. I, I just assume like, well, she's a woman. It's gonna kick in. And that's not that's not how that thing works. Like, you know what I mean? Like they really gotta show you them traits and things don't just kick in. It they just gotta be that way. You know what I mean? I was a little bit more selective second time around on, on, on how I did that, but even still, you just never know how things might show or not show. And uh it was, you know, I made I made my mistakes, but I wish I wouldn't have uh, made decisions from my from that dark place. It would have changed a lot in how I move going forward. You know what I mean? And how my life has turned out ever since. You know what I mean? Man, so just to kind of just to kind of uh, piggyback on that, I think that's kind of dope, and I, I like the the accountability of it instead of being like, "Oh, I made the wrong choice." Da, 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 da. But it's like you know, not only it was coming from a deficit, a choice was from a place of deficit. So, and I think the fact that you acknowledge that, you know, I think that's, I think that's a, a real, that's a real perspective that people need to think about. Like, you know, there's a saying that, you know, when a person's in a hole, stop digging. Like if you were already in a dark place, don't go and make a permanent decision. You know what I mean? Like you're already down bad. Like try to find solid footing before you go and do something that's going to dig a, a even deeper hole. So the fact that, you know, you're able to take accountability for it, man, I think that's dope, man, instead of just blaming others. I think I think a lot of people do that though from a dark place, right? Like, and and, and on both sides, I don't want to throw too much at them, but I think men with a not with, with a whole bunch with, with not much to offer, that get lucky. Like maybe we got maybe we got a little bit of swag with us when we're young or something like that, and we get one of those good girls from the good family or whatever, right? And we go ahead and, and knock her up thinking it's going to be straight. With that in mind, like oh, they're going to be straight. Because they, they come from this good family, knowing that we really don't got it together. You know what I'm saying? And, and really, all it really took is just us to kind of wait it out to see how how our life will turn out. I think we're too impatient sometimes about what's what's in the future. And, and a, that a lot goes to us not having that kind of um, that guidance. Nobody, nobody down the road, you know, a, a dad, a, a uncle we could listen to, somebody that we could really respect. Nobody down the road to tell us be like, to tell us like, yeah, wait it out, don't do this, make this move, don't make that move, be cool. Like we do, we get, we got some uncles that be like, don't got no kids, don't have no kids, but we don't really respect them because they be drunks or something themselves. But so we don't, be, we don't listen. But you know, I, I, I think a lot of, a lot of times that we just need that guidance to not make permanent decisions from dark places. Facts. I hear that for sure, man. And that, I think that's one thing that uh, that I appreciate about my family is like is I got a whole side with a gang of uncles and a whole side with a gang of aunts. And my uncles taught me like from early on, like strap it up, dude. Like you don't want no long time attachment to something you don't really know. So. Man, I was strapping it up, strapping it up, strapping it up. I mean, dang near till yesterday, you know what I mean? Because I, I just wasn't ready to give somebody that much control over me in my life. So it was always like, I'm going to protect me at all costs. So I know, you know, that this is the right move. So, you know, just listening. Uh, like every time I, I'm about to do something, I hear my uncles in the back of my head like, nah, 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 nah. Don't even play that game. So I never did. Hey, let's welcome Dex to the conversation. Yo, yo, what up? What's up, what's up, y'all? So we went over the first two questions, man. Uh, the first question was, uh, how do we select the mothers for our, ch- you know, for our children, right? So what's the criteria of the mother we we had in mind for our offspring moving, you know, when we were young? Okay. All right. So my, I guess my answer. So, um, I mean, my situation was a little bit different. So I met my wife um, through our moms, basically. So, you know, Kev will say it was like an arranged marriage type situation, but it wasn't exactly that. But, um, you know, the family bond, you know, that was tight 
from the from jump from the start um and we just built on that like you know i've basically been with my wife since 2006 2007 um so, so are you saying married. you didn't have any criteria like there, there was nothing like she has to have oh, no, this, no, no. this, oh, this, right. this. So you want to get like cross the list? So yeah, what, what, what was what was the list? I'm not, I'm not saying describe your wife. I'm just saying what was the list that you know like I need this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. So it starts obviously with the physical attraction, right? That that's the the foundation. Like that's what you know makes you interested in the first place. But then beyond that, it goes back to that family thing, right? So she was close with her family. I'm close with my family, and you know I see how she you know, respects her mom, respects her dad, you know, she got her siblings she takes care of too. So, you know, we're just on the same page when it came to the whole family values. Right. Um, and I mean, we waited, you know, after we, I mean, we were together for a while and we got married and waited like almost like five years before we even, you know, had our first child. Um, and, you know, we have a one month old now too. So we have an eight year old and a one month old. So, you know, I mean, this is, it, it you know it's been a process, but the criteria you know the foundation was always strong, man. Foundation was always strong. So your criteria and what you ended up with was was right on line. Yeah, for me, yeah, I didn't have any problems, man. <laughs> I'm good to go. So you know, so I was so what's funny about that, man? I was actually watching uh, it was called the Indian Matchmaker on Netflix, right? And as I was watching that it kind of reminded me of what you were just talking about dex and like the whole vetting process like you didn't have to do like your family basically vetted your wife and that's the way it probably should be like yo they come from a good family you know what i mean and i think that that like that alleviates a lot of the, the bs that we we are choosing on like obviously there needs to be a certain level of attraction i get that but like i, I heard somebody say one time like they said you know a certain group of people they mate from the neck up and other people are mating from the navel down like i think that resonated like exactly how you said it on the indian matchmaker that's exactly what they were doing they're like hey this person comes from a good family they have a high level a high level gene pool this is somebody or this is a group of people we want to mate with and this is who we want to connect our lineage to and i think you know if there were more arranged wedding or more vetting coming from the family it would alleviate a lot of those poor decisions dude i'll say this i guess it was so good that my brother married my wife's sister so that's how yeah look run it back they said let's run it back <laughs> it's not broken don't fix it right yeah they said hey we can't go to the yo never have i heard anything like that like that's crazy like i mean we, we we did it when we were young like hey you got a sister for me you know what i mean but like we like never have like the, the brother married the sister like you know what i mean like that's that's just nuts isn't there another one though no, no, no. That's it. That's it. That's it. I thought I thought there was another one where was, that was going to marry. Like she, she has a, she has another sister or something that's going to get married that's to somebody you're related to. Yeah, no, no. That's like a, a family joke. But I have a younger sister, and then my wife has a younger sister. But you know, oh, okay. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> so, I, so the next question, we go, we go. To the next question. Anybody else got something to say about that one? So the next question we Yo, have. Hold was, on. Um, I want to hold on. Yeah, I want to add one thing. So I know we kind of got ahead, but I know you was talking about the uh, like you being in the dark place and making a decision. So I wanted to ask, ask the fellas, right? Is is that equivalent to saying that you're making a decision based off love? Um, and also when you think about all the traumas that we have, and like sometimes we're searching for love for different reasons, is that equivalent to being in the same dark place? Run that back. Run that back. <laughs> right. So you had you made a decision. You was in a dark place and you made a decision. Who right. hired you pick, right? But most of us make some decisions based off love, right? We say, Oh, I love this person. So you disregard a lot of different things that you see because you're basing this off this emotion or this love, right? But a lot of the love that we experience is based off a lot of the traumas and shit that we experience in our lives. You know what I'm saying? So is yeah. that the same as being in a dark place and making that decision from a dark place? Because it's not it's not a really an educated decision you base it off of your feelings. I would say so. Definitely. I I would say like making a decision like, oh, I love this person versus uh making a decision if you because you know you know basically crashing out. Um yeah, I would definitely say that's the same thing, right? So are you 
So are you? So saying for that, me, uh, I think it's similar, but I wouldn't say it's the same thing. Like because obviously, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily. You know, making a decision based off love is coming from a place of a deficit. Like maybe you just truly like you ain't. It's, you're not, especially if you're not saying you love them because I don't love myself or something like that. Like no, if you just truly want to be with that person for the rest of your life, and like, but do it matter fine. if it has the same if it has the same outcome? I mean, as long as your intentions were pure, like yeah, like I don't think it's the same thing. The like, road to I hell is, is built, you know, is built with good intentions. Yeah, but still, like, I, I don't think I would just go into it and be like, oh, because it, it failed, it wasn't like, it wasn't, it wasn't the right decision. Maybe there was something that happened, you know, like they say, you know, you start with your, your born date and your end date. It's the dash that's important. It's the stuff that you did in between. So there could have been something that happened in between that soured those good intentions. So that doesn't make the intentions and the initial feelings wrong. It's just, it just, things happen, but yeah. So, I mean, now granted, if you're making a decision from a dark place or you so-called love somebody because you don't love yourself or you just love somebody because they love you, I think sometimes that's an issue. But if you truly have those type of feelings and your aspirations and you don't plan on not being with them for the rest of your life, no, I don't, I wouldn't call that the same thing. Oh, perfect segue. Next question. Why do we make women mothers that we're not willing to marry? And this is just a general, like, you know, your, your, your general synopsis, you know, synopsis on what we're doing as a culture. You know what I mean? Like, there's tons of, baby, you know, single parent homes is rapid in our, in our community. So why, why, is there, why are there so many? Who want to jump at it first? Whew, th- this is loaded. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to see how I want to attack this because... Um... I saw a stat as what, like about 70% or whatever, right? So I'll, I'll start firstly. I would imagine a lot of times it's not intentional on the man's part. Um, now, obviously, with the systems that are in place, after you shoot that seed, you lost all rights as far as to whether there's going to be a baby that actually comes forth and that, that such thing. I would imagine, like, okay, so if, of that 70%, I would imagine it's probably in the single digits where – people were intentionally trying to create a baby mom. Like it, it's a horrible deal. So I doubt that that was the intent, but at the same time with the systems that are in place, man, after you shoot that gun, it's over. Like you have no rights. So I think that's, you know, th- th- that's kind of a, a, a trick bag of a question. You, you talk about rights a lot, right? I'm, I'm gonna let somebody jump in, right? But. I, I, I don't want to go too far off, but can't we change these laws? Like, I mean, laws get changed every day, B. Like, why, why aren't we doing what it takes to, you know what I mean, to get ahead of these laws? Like, why are we just accepting the laws as, as is when it comes to this kind of stuff? Right. Um, so I think it's getting to that point because I think, one, there wasn't a sounding board for men to have this type of dialogue, right? A lot of men just suffered in silence. They just went and they just got, they just got raped in the courtroom and they just go and work harder. Like, oh, I'll just pick up more hours. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of that is just, there was a lot of suffering and silence and you didn't realize that there was other people going through the exact same thing. And we weren't comparing notes. Whereas, you know, women, they compare notes. Like this is what's going on. Maybe we, you should do this girl. This is what worked for me. Whereas a lot of times men don't do that, man. We just put our head down and just keep working. And I think a lot of that suffering and silence has caused us to get to this point. Um, so the fact that, you know, you have to acknowledge that there's a problem. So I think that's kind of what's going on now. And I think eventually some of those things will happen. But I think conversely, people understanding those systems, people are just opting out. So I think that's kind of where we are. Like it's until those systems change, people are just flat out, guys are just flat out opting out. Anybody else? Why, why are we creating mothers that we're not willing to marry? No, I mean, for me, like, I just feel like a lot of people is out here just practicing. You know, you're not trying to create a mother. You're just having a good time. And, you know, sometimes things happen as a, as a result of that. And like Reese said, you know, you don't really have the rights. Once you, once you shoot your shot, it's a wrap. You know, there's a... She don't even have to tell you she's keeping it. She don't even have to tell you she's pregnant, first of all. And you know what I mean? She come through after the fact and say, look, this is your baby, blah, blah, blah. Now you got to 
you know, pay child support or you got to deal with it at that point. So, you know, you really don't have a lot of power after the fact. So that's why, you know, it's always important to think, you know, before you get into that situation, how you're going to protect yourself. Because once you get go too far, there is no protections for yourself. It's gone now. And as far as, you know, that point of why we, you know, why aren't we fighting that or why aren't we trying to change the laws, man? I mean, it requires a lot. You know what I mean? You got to have, uh, you, you got to kind of build a coalition and then you got to have the same goals and, you know, you got to have something written down to where, where you want to go and fight and have somebody go and lobby on your behalf. Not to say it's impossible, man, but to get a group of black people or a group of people together, period, on a, on a common cause that's going to be willing to fight that tooth and nail is, is difficult in any situation, especially this one. When you, you know, when you're a man, you just kind of, you know, you put your head down and you keep grinding. It's, it's not like, you know, I guess this generation is changing a lot because, you know, men are more vocal and they're, you know, they're standing up more and they're, you know, they're more, I guess, attached to what's happening uh, than, you know, men of different generations where it's just kind of like, whatever, you know, you roll with the punches, but I, I've, I've seen it a lot, you know, in my own family, you know, where it's just like situation after situation after situation after situation. And now you look after the fact, and now it's like, you know, you got all these kids that you've been taking care of all these years and you love them, but you wish it was a different situation. You know what I mean? Cause you talking about four or five different baby mothers sometimes, you know what I mean? So you know, like I said, after you make that decision, there's, there's really no coming back from it. So you said just because it's out of your hands, like, I think there, there, there could have been preventative measures from, from gate, right? Because, I mean. Yeah, but that's what we, I'm saying, yeah. Like, none of us, like, had had them. I chose when, you know what I mean? And it, like I said, I had, to, I had to get into a dark space. Like, I was, I, was, I was sexually active well before I actually had a kid, right? I dodged it that long. But I got in a dark space and it was like, all right. Maybe it's time for me. I ain't doing nothing else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I gotta win there. So I, yeah. I mean, you can't just say it's too it's to having fun. I, I I do think though that uh you know having kids in general, you know, in the right situation or not, kids shouldn't be playing. They should they should be they should all be accidents for real. You know, so it should be a consequence of living life and like we're living life, having fun, doing what we do. Up oh, here's a kid, but. You you should be doing that with some precautions around it. You know, what I mean, you should be married before you drop. You know, dropping kids out here. What you got, Dex? I mean, so I mean, this is strictly from you know observation or whatever. But I think a lot of people definitely just get caught up, right? Like a lot of the time, you know, you you with somebody initially, it's always fun, you know, all that type of stuff, and then things happen and then, you know, things get real after the fact, right? And it's not all fun and games anymore. So then that's why it becomes like maybe a baby mama situation instead of a wife situation, right? Like when the real troubles actually start coming into the mix, it's not just we're partying or we're, we're just hanging out, we're doing what we want to do. Like now you got to think beyond that and that brings that stress and, and that can show how weak, you know, that I guess bond or whatever, that you thought was there is right. Like it, it reveals the weakness of that. So, I mean, for me, speaking for myself, you know, like I never really made any intention of having like baby mamas or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like I just, you know, I, just like you said, right. You, you, you took certain precautions or whatever, like all the years before you decided to do what you decided to do. Right. So until, you know, I felt like it was the right time for me, I'm being careful. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's that's it. So we could go ahead and move on to this uh <clears throat> this final question, right? So the final question is Yo, Jay, I can't get mine. Oh my bad. Go ahead, go for it. Go for it. I thought you I thought you said something already, but go ahead. Go nah, for man, it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I got a voice. <laughs> Look, hey. see, don't suffer in silence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think uh I think a part of it is that we were brought up with the notion that like you like the old school women like they were they all know how to be what we want them to be the mom you know what I'm saying the wife the caretaker everything and like you know what I'm saying it's already ready all we got to do is just add water you know what I'm saying and then when we figure out 
that that's not the case. Us as men, we don't have the patience or the know-how because we give, we're not giving the same things they have to show them what to do. So we give up. Then we go back and try to find another one. What you what you mean? Go unpack that. What so you, you you... why we not? So the reason, like, so you get with a, a woman, right? But you mm -hmm. thinking, yo, all I got to do is just get with her, give her the basics, and she gonna know everything to do. She gonna know how to treat me. Uh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's been, she been brought up and taught this, but not taking into consideration that all that is gone. Like the grandma don't teach them no more. You know what I'm saying? They they're not learning coming up. You know what I'm saying? So when we get them, we realize like, damn, she don't know. She don't know nothing. Like she don't know this. She don't know that. But we we like because we ain't we ain't had the same things instilled in us. We missing the same values from a man's perspective. So we can't teach them and bring them in. So we rather just give up and be like, shit, let me go find somebody else. You know what I'm saying? She ain't the one. And so that's why we just bounce from woman to woman because we really ain't, you know what I mean, sufficient enough to fulfill them ourselves. See what I'm saying? Hey, it's, it's, you know yeah. what I mean? Really a I'm, lack on our part. I'm glad you st I'm glad you stopped me and gave your perspective, dog. Like real <laughs> real talk. I'm glad you said that, man. That's because I wasn't even thinking about how. We're just trying to find the next one. Like, well, this one's broken. Let me get the next. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this don't work. This is broke. Like, no, we ain't. We didn't have the uh, instructions right. You know what I mean? We read the manual was wrong on this one. So yeah, no, you definitely got. You definitely hit some good points. We we got to take accountability there and uh, step into that leadership role a lot sooner. Understanding yeah. what what getting with a woman really is about. You know what I mean? Instead of it being all you know fun and games. I mean. And be extra cautious when it's all about fun and games. You know what I mean? Like, so as long as we out here playing, hey, strap up, do what you got to do. Even, you know, get that snip. Like, you know, how people don't, you know, I don't, I'm not going to advocate for that. But, well, you know, we got to keep things within, within our power, right? Like, it's like a game. We can't fight the refs. Like, you only can do what we could do. So. Now, granted, I mean, if you know you're prone to not, take certain precautions man that's that's a that's a fail safe you know like in boxing man they say protect yourself at all times like if you know you you liable to go get drunk and not strap up that's fail safe is the snip like so if you out here doing it like that man make sure you you know i, I don't have a problem with it man like obviously you know I'm, I'm no doctor but you know they say it's reversible and stuff like that but man it could totally save you it, it can save your life because i'm telling you man you get caught up in you know, with the wrong with the wrong person, man, like it could it could change the trajectory of your life, and man, it, it's it's not a good look. So, man, I'm you know I'm I'm all for protecting yourself at all times and at all costs. So, uh, final question, right? So, how could we stop or you know reverse the single parent home situation, right, going on in our community? How how could we kind of resolve these issues? What, what could what can men do? What could dads do? They can you know, to, to close the gap because we all see that's that's the very problem wrong with our society, right? With 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 our culture, is that we're leaving all these single parent homes out here, and and, and when it comes to being financial or why our communities over here and and other communities are over there, that's the number one cause of it for real. So, what can we do to kind of you know bridge this gap? I think a big part of it is what we what we emphasize and what we put a focus on. Um, I remember I heard I heard a woman one time say, "When sex got easier, love got harder." So that's the biggest thing, like right there. Like we talking about having fun. Like, is that really just like is that fun? Like doing that? Yes. Doing like yes. Like, but it shouldn't be. That's the <laughs> issue. Like it shouldn't be. Like I get it. Like I'm I'm I like to have fun like anybody else. However, like. You're literally playing Russian roulette. Like, should we really be saying, like, this is fun? Oh, that's what life is about, to have fun while you're young. So the same way that we're telling our boys this, the girls are hearing this. So is that really what we want What we want to emphasize? Like, I think there needs to be more shame in our community and be like, yo, like, there used to be a time, like, if you went and had a baby young and you got pregnant young, they sent you down south because you shamed the family. Like now they're literally having baby showers for 15 year olds and gender reveals and putting it on Facebook. For the most part, like we're all around that age. Like, can you imagine your grandmother doing that for a sister of yours? 
Like she would be ashamed. There's no way that she would be putting that out there. So I think there needs to be a certain level of decorum in what what is acceptable or not. So I think that that goes that that speaks to a big par- portion of what's going on in our community. Like we have no shame. So we need to bring shame back. Wow. Wow. You're going to get ate up for that one. <laughs> look, look, so, so, so if the woke police were to come for that, like, okay, so you're, so that means you're okay with the, the state of our, the state of our community at this point. No, I mean, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm not no, against that's what I'm saying. So, having so some dignity about it. yourself, right? But yeah, that's all. Yo, yo, there used to be things that black people just didn't do. You know what I'm saying? That, Teenage like, pregnancy wasn't one of them, though. I mean, it, 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 but it, it wasn't this rampant. It wasn't this rampant. Like, so for example, like, and, and, and man, this is really going. This is really going off off the rails here. But like, before there was like welfare and stuff like that. Like, it was eighty percent marriage rate in our community because they couldn't survive being a single mother without having that father around. So, you know what I mean? Like, so by, again, going back to those systems that we have in place. So the fact that you brought in the state, you were able to remove the father. So when you start having a lot of those things, you can, you can easily be like, oh, well, girl, it's okay. So like, there's people that are, there's people that are our, our age and they're empty nesters. Like the fact that you raised a whole child by 40 is bananas. And now they're back out here and they're like, oh, well, I'm ready to kind of, you know, do it all over again. Like, that's bananas to me. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, it's God, God forbid, like, so how you saying people will eat me up. God forbid we take away those fail safes on the other side to where, okay, now you're really doing it by yourself with no help. Good luck. Like I said, I'm, I'm all for, you know, that kind of solution, like, you know, dignity. I mean, if Shane comes with it, Shane's come with, you know, Shane come with it. You got to have something to be like, I'm too good for this, right? At, at some it point, cross. Yeah, it like, is I'm both sides. I'm not just trying to push but... it on anybody's both sides. Like, the same goes for. No, I wasn't saying it for them, but I was saying it for us, yeah. right? Like, at some point, you got to be like, man, I'm just, I don't belong mm-hmm. here. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm too good to be in this situation. Yeah. Who got next on this? Should I hop in? Um, you know, I just feel like, you know, in order to make it better, because if you see, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've been watching a lot of podcasts, working from home and stuff. So, you know, just seeing how people frame, you know, marriage and relationships, you know, I, I think we have to be, um, we have to be the change that we want to see, right? So people are, they're down in marriage, they're down in, you know, relationships and they're saying, well, why do I want to get married when I, I got all these married men in my DMs or I got, you know, blah, 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 or blah, 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 blah. I mean, we got to be better as people to, you know what I mean, to show what it looks like to be, uh, you know, to be a, in a marriage or to be a married couple. And we got to do better, you know, and I think by that, you know, showing people what it looks like to be in a committed marriage that, you know what I mean, the positive sides of it. And just also letting people understand that, look, man, this is a lifelong commitment and people going to make mistakes. So, you know, and, and understanding that, I think that's, that's going to have to be the root of it is for people to actually just see it and understand what it means and not just this fickle idea of marriage, this whole, you know, love and butterflies. Nah, like a commitment that you're saying, like, this is, I choose to be here. I choose to be with you through sickness and the health, you know what I mean? Rich or poor, I choose to be with you to ride this thing called life out. And, and uh, I think the more people see, you know, people in that battle, because it is a it's a battle it's a struggle every single day, you know, on both sides. So, you know, people seeing that and, and understanding that positive and getting out of this whole what I call it, the McDonaldization of the world. Everybody wants that instant gratification. They need that instant fix. They need happy, 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 glorify, glorify, like, like, like. And everything has to be like that all the time. But it's not, especially relationships and marriage, man. It's, it's a is roller coaster. It, so is is a child worth that extra I choose to be here? 
You mean because because what it, what it, what it, what it, what it, what it, staying in the in a, in a in an effed up situation? Is right, that what you're saying? Right. Is 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 the child there? Is is it, is it worth your unhappiness? I, I think whew, that's a that's a <laughs> that's a question. Man. That's a question. So so what what I would say is you know it, it's a difficult thing because you know if if you're unhappy and there's that you know there's that struggle and it's and it's a visual struggle that the child can see all the time and you know it that's not healthy for a child you know either rather you know the, I, I get it a broken home and you know that's not healthy for a child but if you you know get into those daily spats where you're almost you know going fish the cuffs with each other I mean that's not healthy for a child either so sometimes you got to step back and make the best decision for the child and I mean I've said this to plenty of people you know in the past like you don't have to be married or together to be a good father you know what I mean sometimes it's, it's better for you to just step back you know analyze the situation and do what's best for the family and sometimes what's best for the family is for you to get out of that get out of that situation but to still be you know in the parenting business you know what I mean and you know they call it co-parenting and all this stuff now but you know just being a father and, and sometimes that's that's what you got to do so I'm not going to say that you know, you should stay in a bad situation, uh, but you should be committed to making that situation better if if that's something that you, you know, feel strongly about. Like I said, there's ups and downs in the marriage, and every day is not going to be rainbows and sunshine. Hell, most days are not going to be rainbows and sunshine, but you also got to understand that you're two different individuals coming from two different backgrounds that have two different ideas of what a perfect day looks like. So, you know what I mean? Having that communication and being able to, you know, talk that out, it means everything. I still haven't achieved that. I'm still working on it, but you know, that's I, just that's how I think about it. I think at this stage of my life, um, I think men are in complete control of every relationship, and if it fails, it's it's completely that man's fault. At this stage of my life, I, I didn't always think like that, but where, where how I think about it now and the accountability that uh, that we need to own up on and have for ourselves um if we pick right or wrong when it comes to the betterment of the child i think we have the power to not only make that situation right but make that situation better sustainable and even get to a happy point if we put together a plan and lead it guy you know lead it properly um i think we have complete control over that like i, I i'll even go as far as at the state I'm in now, I probably could have fixed the first situation I ever had. Like, so that's how, I mean, but I, then I didn't have the skills or the toolkit to do that. Now I do, but then I then I definitely didn't. You know what I mean? So, so look, so one of the things that I, that, that was exactly one of the things that I was going to push back on is maybe you just made the decision too early and you weren't equipped to to do what needed to be done, right? But exactly. I, I, but I disagree that we have total control of everything because that's not true. You're dealing with a whole nother human. Like they have to choose to follow your lead. Like what if they be like, yo, like, no, nah, like I'd much rather you be gone, but I still get whatever resources that I can get. From I, you, I don't, from I don't, I don't system. think, I don't think women can help but to, to follow a man's lead when the leadership is right. I don't think they can help themselves. Right. I mean, that's why they make so many bad decisions and, continue to make the bad decisions like they it, it's they very they very rarely grow past the bad the bad decisions until like they're hit hard with reality of oh i don't have pretty privilege or something anymore right so i i think that you know i don't so, i don't so really what makes think, you think you can supersede that so what makes you think your leadership can supersede that because because I I don't think they I, I think that's just in them to to follow great leadership. I just think it's in them, and I don't think they can help it. I don't even, I don't think they can help it to be honest. But you just said like they're 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 bad at making those decisions, like, right? So they they need they need like, they need no, led they need guided. You know what I mean? They're bad at doing it on their own, right? Just they they seen the way out with um let let's say we take it back to the eighties, right? And, and people blame uh you know, welfare and, and, you know, for the single parent home situation now, right? Um, if we were a better option than welfare, then they would have said no to it. 
but That's we fair. weren't we weren't a better option, right? So if we had better leadership then. You know what I mean? They would have been like, "No, I'm see, not but, giving up my man for no for for for, for Uncle Sam." Like, no. See, but then like you're then you're getting the like you there's we don't totally we don't control much in this country. So to say that like cuz a lot of it was it was financial, right? So like they didn't have jobs. Coming from where we come from, like they snatched the jobs out of steel mills out of out of our town. Like so these folks just flat out had no work. So because you no longer had the means to provide the leadership left like no they still had leadership so obviously it's more than just leadership and there's systems involved that caused that that burden so i, 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 I agree all, you know, i agree but i think that whole generation will sleep at the wheel though to be to be honest right and that's we that's a that's a whole nother topic yeah, but I, I would say like so in, in a utopian society yeah that makes sense like oh follow my leadership i'm a great leader like where that money at dude like you know i mean like that's what they was thinking they were and now the Maybe the smarter decision would have been, I'll take these resources, but I'll still keep my family intact. But that wasn't what happened. I mean, they would have so, had to find a way to spin a system, right? Right. I, so, I, wanna, I, I, want, I want Dex to hop in and, and, you know, the beloved Ron opinion. Go ahead and get y'all out, and you know what I mean? Then we'll kind of circle back. No, nah, quick. I mean, totally agree. You know, you got to be the change that you want to see in the community, right? So... You know, even being a beacon, right? You you're leading your family. You're doing the right the right things. You're at least as far as you know, to show your kids, your sons, the way you know things could be done. And then you know, if you're influencing other kids, like other you know males that don't have that father figure around them, they're seeing it firsthand. Like you know what life could be like, right? Not just you know what they might see on TV or what they might see in their own situation. Like they see an alternative, right? So. Again, marriage isn't perfect every day. You know, you it's you know, you're fighting battles and stuff like that, but you're definitely making a choice to be in that relationship. And you know, it's bigger than you, in my opinion. It's about that kingdom, like we spoke about last week, right? If that's the focus, you know, that's what you're building, right? So just keep your eyes on that. And you know, little things is what you're probably arguing about anyways, that you could get over that, right? That's it. Ron, what you got? Um, I, I agree with Dex. Like we definitely need to become, we need to be the change, you know, that we want. Like we become the change that we want. Um, I think another, and I might have missed it, um, is that yo, we gotta bring back the village. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta, we gotta bring back the elders. Um, I was once in a conference, and they and they said write down five like of your elders. And then, like, five of your peers. So I had peers, like, that you go to for, like, information and help. Like, I had peers. Like, we're all peers. Like, we're, we're all here for each other, but we're still learning. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we learn on experience. But, like, I couldn't really name no elders, man. I ain't had none. And and that was like, damn, when I looked at it, I said, shit, that's why I be bumping my head all the time. Because I got to go through it. Then I learn it. You know what I'm saying? I hit Kev up. We talk about it. But they already experienced it, you know what I'm saying? I, now, now I got to deal with everything that comes from it. Instead of having somebody who can just guide me before it happens, be like, hey, you don't want to do this. And I don't have to bump my head. I can avoid things, man. So we got to, like, we missing that elder because it's that generational gap. You know what I'm saying? That, that the, the 80s and the 90s that took out a lot of our, you know what I'm saying, our elders. Now we just got to be the elders, man. We got to become that. You know what I mean? We got to, you know what I mean, take that and, and make sure that we're, that we're, we're we're pulling these young dudes out, man. They got to experience everything. You know what I mean? We could be we could be like you know what I'm saying the first defense. I, I I definitely agree. It's definitely our time, right? And that's 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 what this podcast is really about, right? Is is shining a light on what we go through, and hopefully some young cats you know can kind of get a hold of this and be like, man, these guys are already talking about it, right? Um, but I think we we said something last week, right? Uh. A good father, a part of our criteria is, is being that for the community. You know what I mean? So if we don't affect the community in a positive way, then we can't even call ourselves a prototype dad, you know, a good dad or, you know, whatever it might be. So it, we, we definitely got to, you know, make sure we're like we're giving back. Um, we're taking care of, you know, the next generation. You're like, hey, man, don't do this or uh, little dude, you need some ice cream or, you know, whatever, you know, even if it's 
teaching the kid how to how to shoot a jump shot at the hoop court. You know, anything, you know what I mean, that we can do. Um, we definitely got I, I, I agree on being a change, right? So Yo, but when, especially when you be in that change, you definitely gotta walk around with this mindset. Like you might be the only example of a man that this young dude see. You know what I mean? You you might you you're gonna be that image. So what image do you want them to see and want them to walk away with? Some people don't care. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the unfortunate part, right? Was like we got we got peers. I don't necessarily, you know, I guess we call them like guys in our not in our circle, but guys that we run into know that you know the, the image they don't care, right? So how do we weed those guys out? Do we do anything at all? So I think it goes back to that that shame and having a certain standard of decorum. Um, like for example, like I was one of the guys like I'll, I'll do for my tribe and I'll do for I'll do for the people within my inner circle and those kids or whatever. And then the more I start kind of experiencing stuff and I had my had a daughter and she started getting older, I was like, yo, wait a minute. It becomes the whole nature versus nurture. So I'm teaching her the right things or whatever, but there's a it's a chaos around her. And I'm like, oh, I need to do a better job of having a level of a standard level of what's okay within this community, or she's gonna be out here do, do, doing the so-called right thing. And like, yo, this she's so lame. Like she actually doesn't want to have a baby now. Like these are the type of things that I started thinking about. Like, oh, there's going to be chaos around her. So I can't keep her in a bubble. So I need to start being more intentional about the space around us. Or I was more intentional about the spaces that I put her in. I, I think, Leifer, you can speak to that. I mean, I, I can speak to a lot of that. But, you know, for me, you know, I, I try to, you know, be a voice in the community and show, you know, I do mentoring through my job, you know, mentor young men and women and young girls, you know, and, and I try to do the same thing in my household and try to try to lead by example, but also yeah, at the same time, let them know daddy ain't shit. Don't be like daddy, be better. But, you know, for real, for real, um, just trying to create and mold an environment within the household because I can't control outside. Like once you leave the house, you know, you can literally say, forget everything I taught you and do whatever you want, but at least building that foundation. So, you know, like I said in the beginning, if she goes too far left, you know, she knows where the North Star is at to come back, you know. I think it's super huge to, to, to be that father figure to them guys who definitely don't have the father figure, right? And And even if it's a glimpse, they'll take a piece of what you show them, right? You could be a terrible person, but if you show them a, a piece of you being a good person, they'll hold on to that forever. You know what I mean? And they can kind of model, even off that, that snippet, they can model like, well, I seen this small piece. They must be good. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely think that's important. And, uh, I think emotional intelligence is, is goes a long way with 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 the young guys as well. I, you know, um, the difference between you know being aggressive and uh, being assertive is 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 an understanding that a lot of us don't you know didn't grow up with, right? It, we always face our um, our disagreements with acts of violence. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or a bully tactic instead of uh, just being assertive in how we feel, stand, and, you know, making sure we we speak what's correct or how things should go. Yeah, but, that, I, that's that's just like you said, man. That's, but that was an example that we were given. That's what, a, what the man was supposed to do. You know, so we're going to take from every little example that we have we're going to take from that and we're going to create who we think we're supposed to be and we're going to live it out. So that's why it's so important, man, for stuff like this and just, you know, I mean, in general, man, to really step up man, and, and give, give them an example, man, give them, give them the prototype dad. Period. Period. But, you know, I only slaughtered y'all guys for hours, so I ain't keeping y'all. And it's late, so I'm gonna let y'all go ahead and get it. Hey, I appreciate you guys though. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Yeah, no doubt, man. Good work. Good work.
See you guys next Tuesday. All right. 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 All right.